Hello and welcome to another guided session. In this session we are going to explore ways in which we become financially independent. Financial independence is often seen as a thing that is hard to reach or achieve, yet most of it is about planning and perseverance. Perseverance in knowing and setting goals to achieve it. Now, most people, they live from one paycheck to another without any way to find a planning. Planning that will lead into financial independence. And that means that they are stuck in a loop a loop that leads them down the path of dependence on the jobs that they try to hold, on trying to control the financial leakage that happens from constant barrage of things that require money, from fixing cars or expenses around the household, or things that are emergency money that is demanded bills for healthcare, and all these various things. And to avoid this seems to be impossible. Yet, with proper planning, proper attention to details, and with the intent to become financially independent, one can achieve it. And achieving will set you free, free to do what you truly enjoy in life, whether it's pursuing a hobby, travel, or seek a life that is fulfilling and joyful, filled with happiness. And in order to achieve this, we must turn inwards and clear our minds of the clutter, the blockages, the things that hold us back. And it is for this reason, I invite you to join me in a session of guided meditation. This guided meditation can be done at any time of the day, but it's best to do it just before you sleep or early when you wake up, because those times are the times when we are least expected to pay our attention to anything else except ourselves. So by setting yourself a half an hour each evening or morning, you are able to do something towards achieving financial independence. And it is for this reason I ask you to make a commitment to listen to this recording for 21 days in a row. Because in 21 days, changes do happen changes that are fundamental, changes that are permanent because habits form in 21 days. And for this, only thing you have to do is listen and follow. Follow the guidance and you shall achieve the things that you seek. Only you have to pay your time in knowing that only persistence will lead you down the path of success, success in life, success in your desires for financial independence. With that, I invite you to take a seated position with your back straight and your legs folded, your hands cup above your belly and resting palm upon palm facing upwards. Should you choose to take a different position, you can recline in a comfortable seat or be lying down on a bed with your head fully supported and your arms facing upwards towards the ceiling or the sky. But also do remember that before you begin all this, you must make sure that you will not be disturbed. For that, I invite you to turn off your phone. I invite you to remove anything that might cause you to to pay your attention into something else like loud 
noises or TVs or radios or anyone who might come to disturb you. So, once you have attained all that and it set things into right motion, please do remember that lights should be turned low and that you should be in a comfortable place with comfortable clothing and a comfortable room environment where you can pay attention to yourself rather than your environment. By turning your attention inwards, you will be turning your attention into the very parts of your mind that will allow you to bring out the resources that are necessary for achieving financial independence. For that, we will begin by taking a deep breath in on a count of three, holding it for a count of two, and releasing it for a count of four. Now, in each session, we use different counts because different counts work in different parts of the body. And in taking the deep breath and holding it for a count of three and releasing it on a count of four, you are actually extending the time frame in which you are breathing and exhaling. And a lot of it has to do with releasing. It takes longer time to release than to take in information. Information that will be helpful once you know that you are following things in the right path. And some of these things that we are going to get rid of are things that are old habits, habits that are not serving us right, things that are holding us back. And to do this, all you have to do is follow my instructions and you'll find there is no resistance at all once you realize that you are actually listening to your inner voice, a voice that will guide you because in due time, your voice becomes one with the things that are in line with your unconscious processes. And on that, we begin by taking a breath on a count of three. One, two, and three. Holding one and two. And releasing one, two, three, four, and repeat the process. Now, one, two, three, and holding one and two, and releasing one, two, three, and four. As you empty out the air from your lungs, notice that your breath can continue. And you can do this on your own, your own counting terms, into taking your breath in on a count of three and holding it for a count of two, and releasing on a count of four. And notice as you take your breath in that the air that flows into your lungs also fills your rib cage. And then if you take a deep breath in, your belly will start to rise and the air will start to sink down. And as it does, it will oxygenate and rejuvenate those parts of your body where the most fundamental exchanges take place. That is the release of things like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide and all the things that have been held up. And then, taking in fresh oxygen, oxygen that is going to be useful for your body. Your body will release all the things that are not useful through your lungs and they will be sent out. While the fresh air that you take in will nourish your cells in your body and will enter into your bloodstream joining those blood cells and be carried to the heart and pumped through the body in a constant motion that feeds your brain, your heart, your body, your extremities, even to the tips of your fingers will receive oxygen. Oxygen that will give new life, new life to the things that are changing, ever changing in your body because chemical reactions are occurring 
at a fast, rapid pace. And those chemical reactions are often associated with hormones. Hormones that make you feel happy, hormones that are associated with endorphins and serotonins. And these are hormones that will stimulate you in the right direction. And some of these hormones are released only simply because we calm our minds and our breath. And that means those breaths that you take and hold and release in a constant motion and keeping your attention on your breath will help to release these hormones that are going to be so beneficial. Because throughout our days, we carry stress, stress that has been built upon us through the, our interactions with our environments, things that have been called upon us to resolve and to deal with. It could be a car problem, a problem with the worker, or somebody whom you are interacting on a daily basis. It could be little things like things that are broken, things that need to be paid, or things that call your attention when you are so busy. And those things that have caused all these tension can all go away and be replaced with positivity, positivity that comes from knowing that as you calm your breath, the hormones that help you to achieve a beautiful state of relaxation are being released throughout your body. Your heart will pump all that beautiful hormone into your brain and your arms and the feet. And you will find that as these hormones are coursing to your body, you are actually finding yourself to be relaxing. And as you take your deep breath in and hold, you also will release at the time when your muscles are also relaxing because where your attention goes, your mind goes, and your mind is capable of relaxing all those muscles. The muscles that have held tension, maybe your neck, your shoulders, even the places around your forehead can relax in your chin and your cheeks and your jawbone, and as it relaxes, your mouth can open partly. Or you may feel the urge to swallow because that's the attention leading you saying that you are relaxing. And as you relax with each breath, you'll find that your breath gets smoother and smoother, less jarred and easier, easier like waves on a seashore coming in and ebbing slowly and repetitiously without any effort at all. And that is a state of relaxation that we often associate with babies' sleep. They are not forced. They are breathing naturally. As we age, we often forget that breathing is a natural state. Yet if we do not pay attention to our breath, we will not be able to get back to the very natural innate ability to breathe calmly, calmly in a way that allows us to relax our mind and our hearts and our body. And as you bring your attention, realize that you are able to scan throughout your body, noticing that each place that have held tension can be released. It could be your forearms or your legs and your feet. It could be the palm of your hands and your fingers. And as they release and relax, we can feel the sensation of sinking deeper and deeper into the place that you have contact with. That heaviness in the body is, me, is a relaxation that happens, that tells you you are one with earth. The place upon which you stand and the place upon which you sit is your connection to the ground. And ground is our grounding, grounding that happens knowing that you are part of earth. 
And oftentimes what happens is that we lose our grounding and we make decisions that are not fruitful, decisions that are setting us back from our goals, both in life and in our finances. And grounding is the very first step in realizing that you, you must realize that you have made errors in the past. And what is beautiful about the past is that they are all things that have happened to serve as a lesson so that you may not make those mistakes ever again, yet know that you are at liberty to make new mistakes and learn from them. And mistakes happen naturally. It may be a mistake to have done things that you have done in the past, but regrets are things that held you back and that is something that should not serve you now. So release the regrets, forgive yourself, and if any of those moments come into your mind and you may see them happening before your very eyes, say to yourself that I forgive myself, that I forgive myself for making those errors because I did not know better, like a child doesn't know that some things are dangerous, like hot stoves or, or things with sharp edges. Yet we learn, we learn from our mistakes and say, I thank myself for making those mistakes so that I have become a wiser and more prudent and that I may not make those mistakes again and learn from those mistakes and build the wisdom that is necessary to move forward, forward in the direction of achieving financial success. Financial success comes from knowing that you are in balance. Balance becomes the key. Balancing your checkbook, balancing your expenses, and balancing your income. If your expenses exceed your income, you may realize that you are actually digging yourself into a hole. Now obvious questions, questions that are part of the conscious process may pop up and those processes are the things that are detrimental because the solutions do not lie in the conscious process, but in the unconscious process. It is your unconscious that is going to bring you the answers to find ways in which you are able to reduce your expenses to a point where your income is greater than your expenses. In that case, you will start having savings. Savings that will enable you to take time to capture those decisive moments where one's destiny can be turned into a golden opportunity. A golden opportunity is one that lets you see opportunities because your mind, in an unconscious sense, is always searching for new ways to resolve the very questions that have been imposed upon it. It may be simple things, and you have been doing this all your life. Remember, you've been thinking of an answer that hadn't occurred to you, and in a moment of unrealized idleness, the answer pops into your head, and you go, Eureka, that's the one. That is the answer. That is when the light bulb comes on. It may be something as simple as searching for a name, for an answer, and it comes, and you could say to yourself, how easy was that? Yet I hadn't had to think about it. Because your unconscious processes keep running even when you do not realize or go about your day. Because your unconscious can think of many things at the same time. That's why you are able to drive, because your unconscious mind knows the gas pedal and the brake and the, and the gears and holding the steering wheel while you pay attention to your left and right and the traffic ahead 
and know what's happening behind you through the sight that is from your rear view mirror. And all these things that you need to pay attention are done automatically through the unconscious processes. And that's why unconscious processes are so powerful because they control everything from your heartbeat to the emotions that you feel when you see a movie that is so moving or listen to a song that reminds you of something beautiful. It could even take you to the moments of your childhood because all that information is stored in your unconscious. And when the processes are imposed upon the unconscious mind, the unconscious mind dutifully obeys in finding ways to make you a successful person, a person who's financially independent. But the processes are sometimes sabotaged. They are broken down because the unconscious processes are blocked by the very fears, very ingrained processes that have held you back. It may be the fear that of success. It may be the desire that you do not deserve success. Or it may be the very nature of your habits or your shortcomings that are detrimental. And in that, your mind is sometimes your impediment from achieving your attainment of your goals. And it is for this reason, it is important to turn your attention to what you do and how you do it, and the very things that hold you back because you have done things in the past that have helped you from achieving financial success. And it is for this reason, observing and noticing becomes very important. And if you ask your mind the very question, what is holding me back? Your unconscious mind will present it to you one by one, where you will see that all those things that don't serve you are right there. And it is through your unconscious process that you will ask them to be eliminated and removed so that you can walk towards your financial independence without hindrance, without blockages. And that means planning, planning things to reach a goal. What you will do within six months, what you will do within a year, what you will do within the next five years, you have to set Goals. Goals could be physical. It could be things like attaining a certain business or saving a certain amount of money. It could be achieving a certain prosperity which you have defined it as success. It could be as simple as purchasing your own home. And that only requires you to know that you have to set those goals. Those goals can be easily identified by writing on a piece of paper, making a list. What would you define as your financial independence? Let your mind do that. You may easily see these things and ask yourself these questions and your unconscious mind will bring it together. And then when the time has passed, you can return to that question and ask again, and you may come up with new additional information. And once that has been set, you can make a page, a page which you can say, how can I get to this point? How much do I need to save each day, each month, each week to achieve this goal? And what do I have to set in motion that will bring me the income that I need and that income can grow by setting new ways of achieving multiple sources of income. It could be simple as renting out something that you own. It could be simple as taking a new job, an extra additional job, or it could be simply as doing things that will serve for your future. It could be simple 
as knowing that you only have to do X, Y, Z to get there. And when these paths are closely aligned and are clear and achievable, then you can set your sails towards that destination of financial independence. And the safety of the harbor only starts when you know that you have something growth, something big on the other side of that sea, that ocean. No captain becomes a great captain by staying inside the safe harbor. It is for that reason you may have to embark on that voyage and leave the safe harbors and the comfort zones that you have set for yourself. It may be that you have to let go of certain pleasures. Maybe you've been using some of your extra money to buy things of pleasure. Maybe it will be something that you are using your money towards that doesn't serve, like smoking cigarettes or drinking too much wine or alcohol. These things are not beneficial in the short term nor are beneficial in the long term should you decide to let them go. And they could be a very, very useful tool in gathering extra money because little monies add up to become big monies like water dripping into a bucket and filling the bucket over time. And that's how the money works. The more money you have, the more money it gathers. And money is gathered through a very simple process. It is called saving. And you know how to save money because you know that you are given sometimes a certain amount of money. And you can spend it in various ways or you can decide to postpone some of those pleasures, some of those needs. And it may be as simple as setting a goal of putting a certain amount of money aside whether it be in a special bank account or under your pillow or in the drawers of your home where you can keep this money and know that that money is your achievement and every time you see it, every time you count it, you can say and be proud of yourself saying, I am walking towards my financial independence. And sometimes getting that money together will be a new foundation may be the down payment to buy a new house. It could be a money that will help you to get a new car, that will help you to get from one work to another. It could be the mortgage payment for a new home that you can rent out that will bring you additional income. Whatever you may choose is your way of getting there but knowing that the answers lie within you and not outside of you is the very foundation that you must lay in order to achieve financial independence. And financial independence comes in stages like baby steps that go up the tower, the tower of what we call the financial freedom, freedom to see beyond the very immediate things that needs to be paid to longer term goals. You see people who have very little money, they only are concerned about getting their next paycheck to pay for their food or their rent or their expenses. But when once someone has money or has been able to save up money, they can plan things. Things like going on vacations or buying certain things or knowing that they can achieve their goals because they are closer and closer to that goal by knowing that they have done something. Maybe it's a small amount of money, maybe a couple of hundred, maybe a few thousand. Yet that is an incremental step. It's like one step before the other. And if you do not take the first step, how can you take the second? It all starts with a commitment. As the old Chinese saying goes, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step.
And if you have taken that first step, you know that you're on your way. And it's often said that success to doing something, to achieving something, is 50% achieved when you have taken the initiative to do something, to do something that will make you be on your path and keep focus. Focus is important. And that's why I always recommend to my clients and my students, to anyone who comes through my door or calls me on the phone for consultation, that they must continue to do this process for 21 days in a row. Because in 21 days, habits form. Habits such as putting the attention. It is like going out to run in the early in the morning it will be the hardest thing if you try it and you have not trained for it. Maybe you only go for one block. Yet, if you run for a week, you may realize that you're going three or four blocks. And soon after, within a couple of months, you may find yourself running maybe a mile or two, maybe even five miles. And this gradual process of advancing and improving only comes when you have made a commitment for change, a change that is demanded by you and is brought forth through the training that goes into your unconscious. Your unconscious will remind you that you are on a path, a path to success, and that you must not veer from the very path that's why people who exercise every day or on a regular schedule will find themselves guilty if they do not do so on that allocated time and day because they know that that goal is set back and their unconscious mind is a very good reminder. It is the, like the mother that reminds you that you must take care take care to protect yourself from harm. And that harm protection comes from knowing that you are doing the right thing. That right thing could be as simple as saving that little bit of money each and every week to go towards that goal. You see, there is a story I'd like to share with you is of a man who has had nothing. He lived in his friend's apartment in a closet. He only had very few things. And one day when he got up, he said, I will change my life. I will do the things that are necessary to achieve financial independence. And he set himself the goal to buy the first house. For that he needed down payment. So he began working in one job and soon after he took a second job and each and every day he would save money until he had enough money for a down payment. And while he kept one or two of the jobs, he took his weekends to fix up the house and he would do things around the house to improve. He would go shopping and look for things that are going to be purifying the house, making it more valuable. So he changed the bathrooms and soon the kitchen cabinets. And he was able to do this by simply saving a bit of money and finding things on discounts and, and sales. And soon after, the house was much more pleasant, a place that was so easily a place where a family would love to buy or rent. And that's exactly what he did. He rented the apartment and from which there was enough money to pay the mortgage and a bit of money was left over. And then he put his attention to buying the second house. He built his income again by working two jobs and saving. And the money that was coming in from the, the rent money, the extra money, was an additional income which he put aside towards building a second 
down payment. Soon after, within the next six months, he was able to get a second home. And because the first one was also a mortgage and he was making payments on duly time, he was able to get approval for the second much easier. And he did apply the same formula. He built the interiors, he replaced the kitchen cabinets. Soon after, he was able to rent the second and third. And so the story goes until he had eight apartments. And those eight apartments, he was able to get an income of about $6,000 without having to work. And with that $6,000, he was able to only have to spend only $2,000 because he lived in one of the apartments. And that left $4,000 extra from which he could build enough down payment money to continue building his empire of apartments, which he rented out and never had to work another day. And this, if you think about it, is a very simple formula. A formula that can mean the difference between having to work year after year for the rest of your life and achieving income that will set you free to travel and do things that you have otherwise put off. Now you have a path. A path that you yourself can construct. It could be building a new job, a new business, or doing something on the side that will advance you towards your goal. And believe me, nothing is futile because each thing that you do in each incremental step is a step in the right direction. And if you're stepping in the right direction, you are ever closer to achieving your goal. On that, I'm going to tell you that you have to do only one thing, that is to listen to this recording again and again, at the same time each day. And each time you listen, your mind will absorb more information and be training itself to do the right things for you to achieve financial independence. And that is how we begin. And on that, I am going to ask you to bring your attention to the part that's between your eyebrows and the forehead and look forward and let your chakras align and see the clarity comes from uncluttering. And once you have uncluttered your mind, you are on your way to success. Now let's take a deep breath in, return to our environment, and go about our day with peace, calm, and joy. I thank you for listening. I'll see you in our next session.